What's up guys, Shane Starnes here with Droid Motor X. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Zook Z1. Big shout outs to Gearbest for sending me this product for review. I'll be sure to include links in the description of where you can buy one. What most excites me about the Zook Z1 is the fact that it runs Cyanogen OS out of the box. This should be an interesting review. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, so I have been using this phone now for several days, but I'm going to give you guys the unboxing experience. Of course you have the phone. We lift our flap here. You've got a SIM card remover tool inside of this little package. You've also got all of your paperwork. Okay, the charging brick here is five volt, two amp, so for a fast charge rate. And then last but not least here, we do have a USB type C charge cable. Okay, when talking about design, this does not necessarily have a premium build, but it doesn't really hurt it because basically it is built out of plastic and it is nice and lightweight, but it doesn't feel cheap. So everything is nice and tight and solid on this phone. You doesn't feel like you have a cheap phone and it actually looks really nice. So while these edges are not metal, they really do look like metal. In fact, I had to ask the question, are these metal? I had to research to see if they were metal. See, it has this really cool looking chamfered edge that is shiny, so it appears to be metal. Uh, it even feels like brushed metal. So on the bottom, you've got your USB Type-C port, your speaker grill on. The left side, you've got that dual SIM card slot. So this is an LTE phone, dual SIM card slot. On the top, you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the right side, you have a perfectly placed power button. And you've got a volume rocker on top of that. These buttons are nice and tacky and they don't feel cheap at all. On the front here, you do have an eight megapixel 1080p camera and you've got your front speaker. And then you also have this really excellent fingerprint scanner. It's one of the fastest fingerprint scanners I've ever used, even faster than Touch ID on the iPhone. And it could even be a hair faster than the fingerprint scanner on the Nexus 6P. Basically you have to press the home button and it just unlocks the device super fast. So overall, I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with the build of this phone. It feels nice and solid. It doesn't feel cheap at all. It is a plastic build, so it doesn't feel as nice in the hand as say like a Galaxy Note 5 or even an iPhone 6S. All right, so moving along to the display, this is a 5.5 inch 1080p IPS LCD display and it gets pretty bright. Now with it being an IPS display, it doesn't get as bright as an AMOLED display. The benefit of an IPS display is that you can actually see it better in sunlight. Light. Viewing angles were really nice on this phone. Color stood out and the image is really sharp when watching videos in 1080p. Now when you're coming from a 2K display or a QHD display, you will notice the difference. This is slightly less sharp, but for a 1080p display, the display on this phone looks really nice. Talking about performance on this phone, it is running a Snapdrag 801 processor. That's a quad core clocked at 2.5 gigahertz and it really flies through the home screens. It flies through pretty much everything you throw at it, loading up games was kind of slow and it has an Adreno 330 GPU. While my load times on the games were a little slower, actual gameplay was fine, smooth, and fluid with not too many stutters or lags. Now, as far as application load times, they seemed to pop up really quickly and moved really fast. The only issues that I noticed in performance at all was loading those high intensive games. All right, moving along with the camera, the back camera is a 13 megapixel camera and it does have optical image stabilization. So on a budget phone like this, having that optical image stabilization is great. You're really gonna need it in video instances. So like with the Nexus 6P, pictures actually turn out really well, but the video is very shaky. Video on this phone is nice and fluid and smooth. So looking at the camera software real quick, we've got some settings here. You can actually change the quality and size of your pictures. So if you don't want your pictures to take up as much space on your phone's internal memory, you can change them to be a little smaller that we can store more pictures. Or if you're trying to send them uh, over email or text message, you can make them a little smaller so they're easier to send. Uh, there's face detection. You can actually change the ISO. Uh, which is nice for low light situations. You can get some of that grain out of your pictures. And then if we scroll over to video, you have a maximum of 1080p, but you can make your videos a whole lot smaller in size so that they're easier to share. Okay, there is a time-lapse mode and you can also do slow motion. Not really a whole lot of settings, but as far as the focus, it seems to be pretty quick. Shutter speed is very fast, as you guys can see here. And the picture quality leaves a little to be desired. As you guys can see, there's not a ton of detail in the photo there. When you, Once you zoom in, especially, you guys can see that there's the images are a little bit blurry. And here's another image that I took. And as you can see, I mean, images are just a, they're a little blurry, which is unfortunate because it does have that optical image stabilization. But no matter how steady you hold this phone, 
the images do tend to be a little blurry, which as long as you're not zooming in on those photos, you probably won't notice the blurriness anyhow. Okay, and so testing the video camera, colors look pretty good in the video that's captured. There's a little, the white balance is going a little crazy because of the lighting setup. But overall, I think the video looks pretty good here. Even the images do well as long as you don't really zoom in on them. The front facing camera is really nice for a front facing camera. It is an eight megapixel camera and it takes images nice and fast as you guys can see. Now, everything looks a little blown out because I've got these lights in behind me, but colors look pretty good here. Okay, so there's another quick shot with the front facing camera. And as you guys can see, it's a little bit of graininess but that is a low light shot there and that front facing camera should get you by talking about battery life it has a 4100 milliamp hour battery and it was able to get me through an entire day without having to recharge the battery if you do need to recharge the battery it does include fast charging and zook is saying that it can get you a half charge in five minutes which is incredible. I just put mine on the charge and actually left it for a few hours and it gave me a full charge. So I didn't really test the speed of the charge, but they're claiming five minutes for a half charge. Okay, so the last thing we'll talk about is software. This is running Cyanogen OS 12.1. So if we go into our settings and we go to about phone, you guys can see we're running Android 5.1.1 and Cyanogen OS. So it's nice to have a phone that runs Cyanogenamide out of the box. I really enjoy that aspect. There's a few little elements of Cyanogen OS that are customizable. You do have your themes, and I actually have a theme that is already installed on the phone. But in order to install a theme here, you'll download one. Okay, so once the theme is downloaded, you'll click apply and it applies the theme. As you guys can see, that changes the entire look of your phone, which is just a really cool extra feature. If we go into our app drawer, there's really no bloat at all. On here, we do have the audio FX. We've got the Cyanogen camera. You've got the Cyanogen file manager. Other than that, you've just got some Google applications. Okay, so we look at the memory of the phone, we're going to storage. It comes with 64 gigabytes of space. So with the OS installed, you're left with about 55 gigabytes. I do have one game that's about two gigabytes here. So the entire storage is about 57 gigabytes, which is not bad. That should be, that gives you hours and hours of video and unlimited amount of space for music, basically. So it's nice that it does include all of that. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for the review of the Zook Z1. In conclusion, I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with this phone at $300. So you have to just keep in mind that it is still a budget phone. It includes Cyanogen OS, which is really what drew me to this device. Just having a phone that runs Cyanogen Mod out of the box is pretty awesome. Design is pretty nice on this phone. The screen why not perfect is great for a 1080p display. The only thing that I really found lacking on this phone was probably the speaker on the bottom now it does get very loud but all you get out of that speaker are the highs and the performance was pretty good on the phone with just a few stutters with high intensity high graphic gaming and things like that the camera leaves a little to be desired but it once again it's a budget phone so you can't really expect a whole lot out of it um, and it's really enough to get you by uh, for a $300 phone you would really hope that it would do just a little bit better than what it does but like I said, it's enough to get you by. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the Zook Z1. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmotorx.com. Follow me on Twitter at droidmotorx. Thanks, guys, for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.